and here we go. Think so? Where is it? There, there we go. Okay. Yes, we're early. I always start these a little early for technical difficulties. So, this is my test. I'm just uh, watching the screen to see how things go. And then I'll start sharpening some pencils and things. Audio mixer. Okay. Sounds in. Pictures in. Voila. Feels like so long since I last did this. It has been probably since September. So we'll see if I'm still uh, got legs for it. If I'm still uh, enough of a natural. So if you're watching this as an archive video, my suggestion would be to fast forward because uh, there's at least 13 minutes before I'll actually get started from now. In fact, I'll set a little timer. And then that way I have time to do a little prep. And if you're joining in, uh, we'll leave that like that. Give you a chance to get yourself settled, get a snack, turn on some music, uh, get your boogie copy going, or whatever you're going to do. I'm going to tilt the camera up at time, um, show my setup because a lot of people ask me how I do these things and it's a little bit complicated and I do have a lot of gear in the studio so I'm very fortunate with my background in video production and just happened to have everything so it wasn't a mad scramble. Gonna work mostly, I think, in charcoal today. So I'm just gonna get some generals going, medium, soft, and extra soft. In terms of the pencils, but I'm gonna use a brush, a chamois, some other things. Bought some of those AirPod like earbuds so that while I'm drawing, I can actually listen to music because the algorithms on any of these streams, especially with the YouTube, but I've heard the same is true for Facebook and whatever other ones there are. The uh, algorithms will sense the music copyright and kick you out. Um, same as it, you know, it's seeing a nipple or whatever. So, hopefully because this is an art channel, and today I'll be copying from a painting, hopefully we don't get shut down. This feels awfully hard for a 6B charcoal. Maybe I'll pull out some Neatrim as well. I was originally going to work on some other papers, but I do still want to stay in the kind of standardized 18 by 24 world right now. 
instead of getting bigger in the new year I'm sure things will change I have a awful lot of newsprint but I decided not to do newsprint because today's a value study so tone paper seems to be the way to go as uh, I can use white to really explain the difference between the light skin and mid-tone but also because I'll be doing a painting, I never paint on a white canvas. I always paint on a toned surface. So it makes sense to have a toned paper today. Let's hear those sleigh bells ringling, ding, 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 too. Come on, it's lovely weather for sleigh right together with you. The weather outside is frightful. That was the first thing that stuck in my head today because it finally snowed again here in Calgary. It looks like we're going to have nice weather all the way up to the 23rd of December. Although, weather reports here tend to not be very accurate at all. It's anyone's guess. You might as well be telling me a horoscope. You know, with nine minutes left, I might run and see a man about a horse real quick. I do hope some people tune in. I'll still do this drawing even if they don't. That's the beauty of this plan. Doing it anyways. It's the talking for three hours. That's what I don't normally do. In fact, when I work, I don't even have words going on in my head. I think on that test of people's psychology, I would have a very low level of neuroticism. It's uh, pretty dead in there most of the time. And I love, love sitting or working in absolute silence. I've really enjoyed the studio with nobody in it lately. Um, it's a big space. I just, I don't feel lonely ever. I think I like spending time with myself or reading and stuff like that. So, um, in fact, my real battle is going on the internet. You know, being in touch with community is uh, like surfing the web is very distracting for me. So if I can not do that, like if I didn't have to have a phone or keep social media up for this business, no one would hear from me. And I'd be perfectly okay with that. I'd be fine living out on a farm. Back to my roots, go sit by the ocean. Slow things down. I think this city life is not for everyone. And I, I kind of joke when I say city life because I'm in Calgary. Not really the most densely populated place. It's more like a, call it cottage town. People say hi on the street to each other, or used to. I'd always run into somebody I know someplace. The Alberta College of Art and Design, I used to call it the cottage of art and design. Like, it's like a little cottage on a hill. Kind of dreamy. We'll leave this out. Wait, is this charcoal? Uh, let's do one more. Then see a man about a horse. That gives five minutes. Five minutes on the clock. I'm not sure if you guys can even see the time at that angle. We'll sharpen this up one more. You may also notice that little Atelier Artista logo burn on the bottom. I love uh, learning about this OBS. Every little while I make more and more improvements. Ah! So I, uh, I'm using uh, this H4 or H5 recorder that I've had for years. 
USBing it into the computer, telling the computer, so it runs its power that way, so I don't have to put batteries in it, telling the computer the sound it, it, um, input is the H5. Then I've got the camera running through on its own um, live stream capture software that came with the camera. This is a Canon uh, 80D, I think, I bought on sale after my cameras were stolen. Oh, there's lots of cracks in this. So that's going USB in. And then I use uh, a screen capture window to throw it into OBS. Hey, Keith! How you be? Last week, uh, the power went out here. So I wasn't able to do the live stream. I don't know if you saw the Instagram, but it was weird. In fact, a whole bunch of places down this whole area of Marta Loop, including the traffic uh, stop signs were out. It's very odd because the houses around Sea Space were not out. So I went and bought some earbuds like you, not uh, Apple brand. I bought $20 off brand ones so that I could at least listen to music while I do this since the algorithm shuts me down if I have any other background sound on. All right, I think that's sharp enough. Gonna work just in charcoal today on tone paper and just do a value study of uh, the paint, something I'm gonna copy and paint. And we'll see if I talk for three hours straight. These new restrictions might also mean we're not going to have the teachers drawing the pregnant girl. So, even though that would be work, uh, I don't think it'll be happening. So I'm going to take the timer with me because I need to run to the bathroom with my mask on and I don't want it going off if I go over two minutes. Uh, plus, every time I take a break today, because I'm using charcoal, I'm going to use the five minute break to wash my hands uh, in order to keep the drawing as clean as possible. Normally I'm lazy and I don't, but this time I'm going to try to behave. Excellent. One minute. Awesome. 30 seconds. So, I think I might do things a little bit different. Hey, you know what? We haven't done this since September. So, uh, I'm going to start with just explaining my setup today. Because I know some people out there have been uh, asking me about that. Maybe they want to do the same thing from home. It would be cool if we were all doing a live stream, but then we were all on a Zoom call. Oh, there we go. So I'll talk about that, I'm sure, again today. 
So I'm just going to tilt up and explain what we're doing for those of you who have joined me. I'm in the studio. Um, just a second. Okay. So I'll turn the mic around so you can hear me. Hey, yo. Just give me a second. Oh my god. It's so tender, this cable. So tender. Okay, we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's all sorts of crap on the screen. Uh, that is just the way it has to be. I'm using the screen uh, as my model. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because I'm going to be doing, it's all crooked, doing a copy uh, of this Bougaro painting, a uh, young girl defending herself against Eros. And behind me here is a canvas that I had in the studio uh, that I decided to prime back over with lead white. So I'll be doing a drawing half the size or less in order to transfer uh, onto something big, blow it up or grid it out. So the value study that I'm doing today is to understand the light and darks. I chose tone paper today because when you squint your eyes and look at the image, there is all this kind of light blue white value behind. And based on how much there is, I figure I'll use white chalk for that. And everything else is skin tone or darker. So by using the tone paper, it's closer later uh, for the way that I paint on a toned canvas. I'm also incredibly tired. I feel like I only got two hours of sleep last night. So this particular live stream episode is in no way sponsored, but brought to you by Monster Energy Drink. I apologize to my family for the horrible health choices I've made. And uh, because we're starting early, I will be adding a little bit of Pendleton whiskey. Don't try this at home. In fact, you're probably not supposed to add alcohol to this stuff, but fuck it. <laughs> oh God, saying that is YouTube. I'm not monetized, it doesn't matter. Um, I bought some earbuds so that I could listen to music while I draw, but I won't cut the first one. So I'm gonna tilt down and uh, we'll get this drawing show on the road. It looks so crooked, but when I do this, it's nice and straight, so. In fact, I haven't really tested this out yet. I might have to make some adjustments throughout, but I'll be able to see because I've got that screen in front of me. Uh, yeah, that's not what I want. I don't want you guys staring at the back of my head. So, we'll just, oh, it's touching me. It's literally right over my head. Okay, I mean, that looks all right. That looks all right. Thanks guys for joining me. You heard me down the hall peeing, oh God. You know, I, I'm just glad that, um, I already had the technology in order to do this stuff because going out and buying the right thing or I even went on Amazon and there's like this little USB connector, but I just figured out ways around it. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to have to be very cautious not to lean forward. I'm good. I'm also gl glad to see that, uh, you know, my hair is not full of dandruff. Um, Okay, so I'm looking forward onto a screen that tells me everything that's kind of going on. I can read your guys' chats if I pay attention. And the screen is far enough away from me that when I originally I was using photos of Ryan or other models, it kind of gave that same visual impression of someone being on the stage but further away. In fact, I'm probably going to bring the screen a little bit closer. I guess the reason in part why I'm saying all this other than saying out loud is there is still a little bit of setup I need to do uh, in order to get everything cozy and comfy. I just got off my fogging shift at Sea Space, so it's been kind of a, a rush to do. This is not a permanent setup here at the studio. Let's see if we can put this up a little higher. Whoop, whoop. Okay, hey. As long as it doesn't fall on my head, right? That's what matters. Okay. That's a little bit better. Oh, 
Oh, you could hear me chugging this too. Oh my God. You know, I've only ever had the regular one of these. This is, tastes like green melon. Okay, so we have that drank out of the top. Let's just see if it says don't add alcohol. Oh, do not use with alcohol. I have a heart attack, we'll know why. Because I'll be here three hours, I figure one little shot is not gonna kill me. Um, might make me a better drawer too, to be a little bit loose. I haven't drawn since Friday. Uh, I spent the weekend in bed, like pretty much sleeping the entire time and learning about serial killers on YouTube. Which would explain a lot of the dreams I had last night. Oh, I'm gonna put this a little further away from the mic because it's loud. So I'm gonna use Pontemoro timing. And I'm actually not gonna start by doing the drawing today. Um, I think up in the top right, uh, above the cupid, I'm gonna just do a little value study, maybe even down here. And so just a, a little, just a bit bigger than a thumbnail. Um, version I guess I'm also for those losers on Instagram they're gonna get a live a live uh, feed of this because I'd like to convert them that would be really nice I'm not gonna be able to answer my phone so if it already I'm getting texts but uh, mm, that monster tastes pretty good so I'm yeah let me just get on this Instagram I'll get this down again. It's been months. So, what do I do here? Wait. Story, live, it's rock and roll. Okay. These guys are lucky. Lucky today. So, we'll uh, start the timer. Do what I said. I might talk about whatever I might not talk I really really enjoy working in the silence so yeah I'm gonna do a little study uh, about this big uh, just a quick value study and the reason I'm picking this area up here is because there's not a lot going on up there it's like a dark tree uh, but I want to have something to refer to to remind me of the the simple shapes in this piece and not get uh, overly complicated with what I'm doing. So, just a small study. So, in the French academic method, of which uh, Bouguereau comes from, Ecole de Beaux Arts, he was the, the main squeeze. You can see his work in the Musée d'Orsay. So, I'm going to squint my eyes down and uh, just simplify to four values. I don't want to get too complex here. Just simplifying down to four values. And I'm only going to spend not the whole amount of time. I don't care if the proportions are right. Um, so I'll just start by drawing what I, just simple shapes. It's like a tree. This will be very, very dark. Uh, there's some planes on the ground. Up here we have our little winged heroes. Part of why I'm also doing master copies and studies is because I actually, I don't want to just be a teacher of classes. I want to improve my craft and to do that, I feel like it's really good to do master copies. If you're not around masters every day, at least you can study from them, right? Okay, so this is his little butt. This is his leg. Simple. What's up here? Her arms come out. Bouguereau did something. Uh, really nice in his paintings is that he would either have a dark hair female like we have in this 
framed by a light background, or if they were blonde girls with, with fair skin, uh, he would frame them with the dark so the background might come around. So she's getting a little bit big here. Curve of the back. So a lot of this is like a middle value tone. And I know the last time I did this, I was being called out for saying the word tone by someone. Just a colloquialism of the field that we're in here. Okay, there. Sure, there. I also picked a rather complex thing to study. That's my fault. But I figured with this amount of time, and I was meaning to do it anyhow, this is a good opportunity. So, uh, the plants down here, we'll just make a simplified version. Now I'm going to go from light to dark, or sorry, from dark to light. Already I can't talk. We're off to a good start. I can't draw this small, usually. I'm used to this big size stuff. So Luke draws this small. It's a good thing to practice, I'm sure. So simplified thumbnail. There she is. We've got some darks up here. Okay. So I don't need eyes or anything on here. I'm just going for the darkest shape, which is her hair. So you should be also be able to do these in ink, or I would do them a lot in Copic marker. We're gonna we're gonna blend the big one and have some nice uh, rendering, just because we have this much time. So this paper is not quite as dark as her skin value, but I'm gonna consider her skin value um, middle. And then I'll just put everything lighter around. Grass uh, and those mountains and stuff behind. I'm going to consider those all a light. When I squint my eyes, I can see them. But they're so far away, I have to mentally kind of project that something different. So head's got to be further back. Oh man, that monster made me burp. Okay. So just the darks first. So, um... Kind of this tree shadow shape. So I'm just scribbling it because it's like maple leaves or... Oh, it is maple leaves. This is going to be pretty fun to paint. It's going to be a lot of work. Just, just squinting the eyes and seeing what's light, what's dark. And maybe even darkening the darks, right? It's not true black here. But for this value study, I'm going to say, hey, this is my darkest dark. Her hair, even this plant down here. Even the plant at the bottom. Because the study is about what the shapes are. What does this look like from um, 20 feet away? Because we want it to look good from far away too. So I'll go down to the cherub's butt. Sorry, the not cherub, it's an Eros, but I don't know. Bugaro is really good at drawing these like babies and flying things. It, you see them sometimes on like Hallmark cards. So her legs, uh, and the shadows of the blue of her skirt. Maybe even the shadow shape on this piece of concrete that I think she's sitting on. So the blue itself is not as dark. It's the same value as, as the shadow of her skin. But all of this shadow under her foot, just the foot kind of peeks out a little bit as a dark uh, mid-tone. The, sh the shadow shape connects to the foot of our cupid, comes up cupid's leg. So just simple shapes. So all of that is dark. So I'm flattening it, 
simplifying it. It's nice and small. But it's a reminder of, of how I'll be treating the big one. So this little study will help you see how I create the bigger piece. So all of this uh, ground and everything, it's all dark. Darker than this paper. So if you have uh, this concept here we did in art school, and that is you get four pieces of different gray, so white, black, and two middle grays of construction paper, and you cut them out in the shapes so that they help you study uh, landscapes or, or whatever you're deciding to make copies from um, so that you can understand values and composition. I, I figure you need four, uh, no more. Five is nice, four is good. So I'm simplifying the lights. I'm just gonna have one light value in the back and everything else will be either uh, this paper color. Actually, I see a little bit of the paper color value, sorry, come out on the foot. It's like this is the first time I've ever done this. Unfortunately, it's the first time I've done this on this YouTube thing. Um, this has some value to it, this concrete. So it's not the darkest dark. The edge where she's seated is the tone of the paper. Uh, all of her skin, I'll leave as the tone of the paper. But under her armpit and her deltoid, down her side, her lats. Now, Bukuro was very good at the soft, soft light, which we have in the studio here. So it seems to be uh, a very soft transition. In this study, it'll look a little harsher. We'll go up to her belly, her breast. And so I'm going to add a darker value there. So ideally, this toned paper would have been a little bit darker tone, like uh, my first intention was to do the uh, Strathmore. I'm going to zoom in on this upper camera because I realize I can. I'm drawing so small here. Let's do that for you guys. If you are watching on Instagram right now, you can go to my YouTube channel or Atelier Artista's YouTube and uh, see a much higher quality DSLR version of this zoomed in right now actually. And I, I'm willing to bet the sound is also much better. So I did these live streams um, for the, you know, can't have drawing here right now. We're a little locked down, so we'll do it this way. So this is a general shape of the wings. And then the tree trunk and the grasses behind to simplify the shape so hopefully you can already see her foot now um, his legs are actually in shadow so I'll make it the darker value than just the uh, the paper value there is a peaking of light here but it's not as light so I'll just put a dark shadow cast shadow from this little winged eros so this is actually doesn't read as light down here this whole uh lower half of this whole composition is is rather uh dark there's a little dark behind so this is the grass behind and then slightly lighter there's a mountain i'll just tap the mountain in because i'm going to put white there and then so there's a slightly lighter value, but some material. It's not as light as the toned paper for the extra leaves that are kind of peeking out. 
I'm willing to bet too that Bouguereau painted the sky in at the end. He probably had it there in the very beginning, but he probably painted on top of some of the leaf area um, so that it, it looks like patches going through. Um, because I do notice, I'm looking at this drawing or this painting in color, but the top area of the sky is much more teal in the painting and the lower area towards the horizon looks to be made with uh, French ultramarine. So just something of note. So this is going to be the arrow, his little cupid hand, partially in shadow here, the forearm. And then it catches on his bicep and peck. Her hand is coming up here and her hands are rather dark compared to him. He's got, um, I can't see that he has a penis and not breasts, but I'm saying it's a he. <laughs> he uh, has much whiter and lighter skin, probably because she's supposed to be like a farm girl in part, so, and he's angelic, so he's more pure. Uh, down his back, shadow, separating our lights and our darks. Around his butt, cheek, shadow. The wings are not white uh, in this piece. So I'll kind of just draw their basic shape. Even though they're not outlined. Right, the way I'm drawing today has to take into consideration a more painterly approach. So even though I'm drawing out shapes, uh, I'll be using brushes and smudgers and erasers a lot more than, uh, is. let me move it up. Go to the YouTube if you're on Instagram right now, because it's going to cack out whenever and I'll just uh, unplug the phone pretty much. My phone does not keep a charge. So it has to be tethered, so it's going to die any second. There's an eyeball, a little fat face, whatever. That's not important. It's, it's what is dark, what is light. It's behind him, very, very dark. Very, very dark. Okay. We got nine more minutes, so I might just tighten this sucker up a little bit and also the, add the white so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, her face is in the shadow side. And these are good things to note because when painting, it's very wise to keep your shadows and your lights separate because otherwise you start to get very muddy color. And Bruguero does Everything's kind of um, faint. He used a lot of scumbling layers and kind of glazing. But he also used warm and cool to denote what was closer or further away. So if you look at them in black and white, uh, you don't see all that the little tricky stuff he's doing, which in part is why I want to copy this so that I can understand uh, what he's doing to make his paintings and his flesh look so vibrant. There's her butt. Okay, so there's a little bit of dark uh, right underneath his arm. And then those hills. His leg is a little bit dark. His butt's a little bit dark. So just adding a slight bit of material. Okay. Let me get the white out and see if this worked. Because right now, it's honestly just a concept. Just to see if this will work. So the sky is the lightest value. That's where I'm putting the white, it's behind her. So, it, I mean, it appears to be working. I have learned already from this that I will have to add uh, some material 
onto the tone. There won't be a lot of this tone paper left because it's just on a few parts of the lightest part, like the back of her shoulders, his arm here, maybe a little bit by his ankle. Other than that, there's material of some shape or form. So simplify, simplify. Sky. And then around her face, that's what really frames her profile. And this girl that he drew, he used in a lot of his works. She actually, I believe she took classes from him and also uh, it's kind of like a servant around his estate. Bouguereau, although kind of forgotten by the art history books, was very successful in the day. At the same time, you were getting, like, it was late 1800s, some very early 1900s. Uh, it was kind of frowned upon. This work was bought in the States a lot. It wasn't so popular in Europe anymore because of modernism. So there's our little mock-up of what we're going to do big. Uh, you know, wow, there are things that I, I might change as I go. Uh, but let's move into the big one now. Might as well start a little early. We've got five minutes left. So I will zoom out on my YouTubers. Oh, hopefully get this camera back nicely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. That looks fairly good. Right, so that's going to be the tree up there. So I'll do the same thing where I draw, you know, just the simple shapes um, and kind of jump around. I think I'll start with vine charcoal uh, because vine charcoal is very forgiving. It's kind of like light pencil. Gets erased nicely. So also I'm going to think, you know, center line, uh, look for some alignments here in this piece. I'm not going to draw out the entire uh, character as if I'm drawing from life. Whoop. There we go. It's nice and soft, everything here. So all up here is gonna be that tree. I feel like the tree is gonna come down here. Little Cupid, that little plant will be down here. So this study is really gonna help me figure out how to paint this. There's my kind of grassy layer. Okay, her head is about here. Size of an egg on this page. Might actually even be a little more down. Use that across her brow line. Maybe right about here. I'm still feeling it out, right? Like I don't have to commit to anything yet. Just wanna block in the major shapes. In fact, maybe I'll even start with the wings. The wings are nice and abstract. Actually, that was the right place. That tells me I gotta maybe move his head over a little bit. Tree. Kind of dangles down. Her body. 
kind of arches really close to the edge actually and her butt her hips her dark hair the center of the paper is right about here but I have nothing uh, in there in fact if I don't draw her arms don't draw her um, shape and I just look at that negative space and it's kind of like this is looking through her like a window his leg and then it gets dark again up here so I can kind of like just draw that shape for now just to help me place things Sometimes it's better not to draw what you see or what you know. Also, uh, when I come back, I'll not be wearing glasses. I find that helps me a lot in the beginning. It's kind of like my superpower in that uh, I don't think being nearsighted is bad at all for art. Definitely helps me simplify things when I need to. So I'm just going to like guess her shoulder up here for now. Just kind of dance around. It doesn't really matter if you get this right. Um, charcoal is really forgiving. You just rub it away. I feel like I want her closer to the side, but I might just commit to this. Cause we're going, it's just a study. I don't need to have it perfect. We can compare it later on the board. I'll uh, flip the camera up. Also, I think my paper isn't the same ratio as the painting. So I don't need to be perfect. It's funny when you hear a Virgo say that. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're gonna take five. That's what we do. Uh, I mean, I've already got a start, and hopefully you've got a start too. Maybe you did a little thumbnail. She might move the breast down. So, need a fresh look sometimes. And uh, that's what the break is for. Fresh look, and if you're charcoaly, uh, wash your hands. And if not, you get your monster. You taste it. You go take a pee if you need. I can't taste the whiskey, so I'm just going to pour a little bit more in. Then I'm going to put the bottle away, because this is a special studio stash. Pendleton, blended Canadian whiskey. Then, if you flip it over, it says Hood Distilleries. If you flip it over, it's not from Canada. It's from uh, Oregon. It says Canadian whiskey, but it's made and put together in Oregon. Hood River, Oregon. So they waste all this gas and time and money and they ship probably something I can get right by my house. They ship it down, they blend it, put it in a bottle and sell it back to us at a premium. Silly. I, I bought it because it looked like it was from Stampede. Later book. All right, break, five minutes and then we'll come back to this. Hey, Andrew, taking a break. All right. my earbuds too.
shall we listen to? Book on tape is probably a terrible idea. I'm taking this with me, pee and wash my hands. Whoa, 50 seconds. Oh, sorry guys. Light mat. All right, ten more seconds. All right. So I realize a lot of people too who might be watching this might also desire a little more figure drawing information but at first I'm just gonna block in um, light and dark shapes like I did up here then as we progress maybe I'll talk a little bit more about how um, the anatomy fits together but first just think I'm after copying a composition so a bigger version of this um, and I'll take the full 25 to get everything in place uh, and then chances are I'll just uh, roll over it and lighten everything uh, with my delicious kneadable gum. Speaking of kneadable gum, I also have some Twizzlers sitting right here. They were in my car for many days and uh, they felt hard. I was still eating them while I was driving, but since it's cold out, I brought them inside to soften up a little bit. They're still pretty firm. But they remind me of these things. Okay. 
I got my earbuds in, so uh, I'll try to talk as well, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to take a couple measurements now too. I don't like this. this is coming up too high so I'm just gonna lower it a little bit if you're drawing along uh, you don't be, have to be drawing like the same uh, spaces a little closer to the side all right that's better Head, chest, hip. It's like the nice soft areas here. Simplified cloth. Oh, clothing. Brings the knee a little further out of the little chair. So I'm kind of focusing, I'm gonna just move around, but I wanna have a, uh, I wanna have a place from which to grow. Um, this foot comes out here. It's Gives a little button. So in this case, I might draw, uh, rather than the bucket, more of a cylinder. Venus mound. Okay, it gives me a little more placement. We like it. This is that big dark shape. It's like a, her leg comes down like this and kind of, that's kind of a swoop. And in terms of the shape, you know, his, his leg kind of curves. I feel like 
Let's heal. Little kid anatomy. Sorry, let me pull that up. Just put material down. Anywhere that's darker, really, there's going to be a lot of places. So I don't mind piling it up. This stuff kind of rubs away anyhow. Uh, we'll use compressed charcoal soon enough. back lines up to the breast so I'm gonna put that a little bit lower okay so that arm ends up staying where I had it it's just gonna go further further back along the body here so copying that shape following the rib cage turn and the stomach too. This is his arm. It almost goes horizontal. Look like his shoulder kind of lines up to the armpit. And it's a tube coming towards. So a lot of times when people are, um, they don't get how the limbs are coming, but his arm, I can pretend with the pencil that it's sticking this way. In fact, I didn't really elaborate much in, in the small study about this, but this is a cylinder coming at this angle towards me. So I can look at what's happening on my pencil or if you have the pencils with the stripe across it's really good to show you the form in essence that's telling me this turn and that's where that forearm starts coming out okay gives me a place for her hand Looks a little big right now, but we'll see what happens. I'm not going to put the light in until the very end. There we go. Because I'm going to try to keep that area clean, of course. So the ear is like probably around here. So it might bring the face a little bit more forward than what I had it. 
Well, just keep guessing, move stuff around a little bit. Maybe even at the big halfway break, we can do a comparison of the anatomy. I'm not looking for this to be perfect today. It's really about value shapes. Um, so I am drawing differently than maybe I would if I was drawing from life, which would be a lot more structural. I hope that you're finding a booger or something that you can copy too at home because it's all fine and daddy to watch. I mean, I would be so bored to just watch me doing this. Actions, man. Actions speak louder than words. Um, but also, you know, you could be doing the same one. You might not treat it the same way. If you try to follow where I'm going, that won't be very good. It, do it doesn't have the same passion. You know, I, I'm my eye is kind of dancing around the subject as well when I look up at the screen and I kind of just find a place that interests me and you know if I did the exact same drawing next week god forbid we do this twice um, I would do it a different way you know art is a very subjective thing sometimes that's why even teaching you know one way of drawing or, or whatnot I, I teach a certain way at this stage that someone's in and then I teach a completely different way once they've kind of, you know, leveled up from there. All right, let's get this little freak's head in. <laughs> I think that's where the forearm's gonna be. I don't know how committed I am to that. I feel like her hand is even a little too big already. But I like where his arm is. That's the issue. I like that part. So it might stay, it might not. His butt's a little more leany. That's all dark. That places his heel even closer to this side. Okay. You know, maybe I don't quite have enough on the front of this leg. I remember hearing or reading maybe in the Bougaro book about how impressive he was at making these flying babies look like they're flying, like defying gravity. That was his wheelhouse, I suspect. Maybe he threw babies up in the air, I don't know. We don't know what the techniques were, just stringing them up. There was no rules back then, you know. Good enough for Jack the Ripper, good enough for Bougaro. Oh my god. Yeah, I have been watching this YouTube channel called, um, I think it's that chapter. And it's very intriguing. There are so many Canadian serial killers. Like, statistically, more than what the U.S. has per capita, for sure. From Pickerton, uh, Christian Garnier. I'm just surprised because they always joke about how it's mostly in Canada and Texas, which I didn't know, but I'm kind of afraid to go out now <laughs> after watching all this stuff. Thought it was safe here. You know, we had that the beheading guy on the gre Greyhound even. Just basic shapes here. Not worried about getting it correct. That's why we have the eraser. And you'll see that I actually, I mean, I keep the eraser in my left hand. I'm not completely ambidextrous, but I can definitely work with it. And an eraser is kind of like a dull tool anyhow. So I work towards the line. And if I have to, look, I just add some more and I just erase again. And this um, material is quite forgiving. So the little kid's face comes out from her hand. Small. Head is smaller. It's kind of 
in a quadrant. Um, it might be way back here. And this hair goes back to where I have my tree. Kids' heads are different. You can't use those same measurements. In fact, I'm looking at this kid's face and like his eyes are halfway down, but his forehead is massive because kids are like actually in thirds. You got huge foreheads, huge. And then it's like their, their little face is scrunched up at the bottom. Kind of like that, little freak. <laughs> That's the whiskey talking. Okay, not terrible start. Oh, I've still got eight minutes here. So um, this is also a really dull material. I'm not trying uh, to get super accuracy here. It's got to look good from afar and then I can just uh, justify the shapes. When I teach this in drawing class, uh, I would actually, I get people to draw uh, skulls and stuff, something less objectively you know, a wing, so, so that you draw what you see in terms of the shapes, not what you know. The wings come down from the head, so might have added a little too much height here. But if I if I draw my eyes across um, from where she is on the painting, maybe his head's a little bit higher up. That's fine. We'll just rub the eye out, move it up slightly. But I would just have them use the two types of charcoal, drawing in shapes, smudging. You get very dirty, uh, but it's closer to what we do when we're painting. Okay, so general wing shape now has changed a little bit. So I'm not gonna have like a fully finished master copy. That's not the purpose. It's the value study. I'll put my time and effort into paint. But I want to have sat and studied rather than relying on the paint stage. Paint is a much more expensive stage for sure. Where the heels come up. Yeah, so the tree ends up, winds up there. And I'll put in dark and worry about the individual shapes and stuff later, which I can draw, uh, add, in with you know nicely sharpened charcoal pencil here. I see no one's commented in a while, so I'm gonna assume this is going great. <laughs> What's cool about um, the way he probably worked this painting too, drawing these shapes. I mean, a modern artist today would probably just make a stencil and make it easy. But he could bring down darker leaves and stuff to help emphasize the design, right? Like he's not actually painting a real tree that exists anywhere. He's using it to enhance the composition. This whole thing is dark at the top. It doesn't hurt for me to put material up here at all. Oh, his little freakish chubby baby hand it goes right by his face okay so uh, if I look across to her eyes his fingers about there and we can just replicate that angle all right it's looking a little messy I'm starting to get nice and dirty that means we're having fun usually I do feel rusty in fact, uh, I think this is still got to be closer to his head. So, might just tilt it a little more. I also thought it might be nice to do some more copies in this Wednesday night, you know, rather than only drawing from models even though that's the practice I want to maintain. What's great about this is you can download these pictures to your computer or pick the ones you want to do and just use the same kind of system to get it accomplished. 
Might bring his forehead out a little further too. Might just make his head a little bit longer. There's like just these dark little shapes to make his face behind. It's just a tree. Maybe it wasn't there in the beginning too, and Bugaro's like, you know what, we'll make his pale face come out more if I just put some dark leaves behind him, behind his face, because it's very, very light, so it frames it nicely. I never really took a composition class in school. There isn't uh, a great way of learning it, except by studying a lot, just looking a lot, what you're doing. Hopefully, why ask yourself why you like something or why you don't like something? What about the balance of it? There's no like, I mean, I went the angle of sacred geometry because I had that whole history of doing the Tibetan work, um, which is very much a stiff based off frontal lines. There's not a lot of dynamic angles happening. So this is a very different approach. So how do you learn composition? Well, I would suggest it's those thumbnails. It's the small stuff that matters. Uh, behind this guy's shadow, there's some stuff happening down here. It doesn't really matter. Looking at the foot, yeah, that's about where her heel is. I feel like her foot might have to be a little bit longer. Her toe goes past this alignment. You know, in my head, there's like this vertical line here. So I'm squinting my eyes and I'm creating a very simple shape. It's not a super light value. That's essentially the foot that I see. It will have value on it. But I'm trying to find out where this little guy sits. And it might be a little further back. There might be a little bit more lean to this. But the toes are not touching. So that's something I'll have to be uh, mindful of. To have a little bit of space in between those two things. All in all, down here is all dark. And maybe her foot needs to be flatter. That will make it look less bulky. Between them, there's a little bit of mountain. So in the original, I, I don't uh, show a lot of this stuff. This is just vine charcoal, so it's barely there. Barely there. This will all be white chalk. Maybe I'll draw more negative space. I'm not going to fix this either. That would be a nightmare. I feel like her face is uh, further forward as well. Maybe I can measure up some distances or something, but we'll, uh, not this one, maybe the next, maybe next one. I've got 30 more seconds, so I'm going to uh, wash my hands of it. <sighs> Blow it off a little bit. Uh, maybe sham, chamois here in a second, but uh, let's uh, take part of this break when I'm not drinking the whiskey and uh, I'll tilt the camera up and we'll have a look at them uh, beside each other. Actually, they might be very close to the same size. I definitely have her back arching a little too much. Uh, that way you guys can see where we, where we are. You know, so let's do that before we take a little break. We'll see how things are going. So I'm just going to tilt this camera up. Oh, it's a good thing it's a magic arm towards the screen. It's kind of nice set. I'm just one guy doing this and I, I can make it work. So um, take these earbuds out too. Okay, yeah, so I mean, if you need to pee and wash your hands, that's fine. It's a live stream, but later when it's archived, eh, you can do what you want. And uh, I'm going to step back because I would like to, uh, hmm, 
wonder if I can clip that. I would like to just have a little time to look at it. I'll talk as loud as I can so that you can hear me. I know the mic's facing the other way, but maybe if I just put something underneath there. Wow, that's really close to the size, actually. Oh my god. Guys, it's the simple things in life that make me happy. Like that working. Hot niggity dog! Um, you'll see I didn't measure or anything. That's just the eye. I would say that this is looking a little big. Um, they might not be exactly the same size. But I'm not tracing. That's not the point of this. The point is to, uh, I'm going to step back because I'd like to see my accuracy and use this as an opportunity. This is probably the stage that I skip the most. Oh yeah, I see what's going on here. And uh, that's why my stuff ends up looking crappy. So I want to judge it right. Her face is too small. I can definitely... Uh, see what's different. They are fairly close to the same size though. Bring her face uh, forward more to the right. His butt could be lower. My guy looks a little bit, a bit demonic right now. If they are the same size, damn you know what, that is actually pretty close. Um, then hit the feet have to be lowered. Both his uh, little kick, uh, his standing foot. In my mind, that's funny. In my mind, this uh, area here, that's funny. Like, is is here? Like, I'm blocking it out. So, I don't mean to be doing sight size. Let's see. Oh my god. Uh, sometimes it just happens. Okay. So I gotta bring her face forward. You know, I'd be really interested to trace it and see how far off I am. Um, not the point. You just got to keep getting better. Yeah, his foot's got to move over. So I do a little inventory in my mind. We're going to take, um, we're going to take the five minutes. Maybe not even. My hands are so clean. The uh, charcoal that I'm using, which is just vine or willow charcoal, Man, I can't believe that works. This TV is on loan from C-Space indefinitely. They're closed. So that's nice. I'm pretty happy about that. So I'll tilt that down. I keep an inventory of my mind of what I want to change. Wow. This magic arm, though, is really stiff. I'm going to need to... Probably use a tool to get it to move again. I hope you at home get to have a little whiskey. I haven't had a sip and now I'm concerned because if I don't drink this fast enough, I'll be sleeping at the studio. It's only seven. Um, 7.30 after the next session is, is the halfway point. I would also suggest you get a little piece of paper uh, to rest your hand off in the next one because you're going to start dragging along the page. Delicious drink. It's weird. I do like these because of the vitamin B. Like, if you're ever super hungover, and I just did Silver Movember, so I'm pre planning here, but um, sometimes when I was having a really crappy, like, no sleep, hungover day, I would get one of these monsters and chug it on my way to work, and I would feel absolutely normal and fine. 
And I think it's the happy vitamins. I don't know what taurine does. I don't think it's good, but I find these are a good all around fixer. They can't really sell it like that, I don't think. Hey guys, thanks for your comments on the YouTube. I like seeing that. Since I know you're there, Jeff and Keith, and probably it says eight other people, I can't see you or know who you are unless you comment. Um, what would be cool is if we all had setups at home and we we're live streaming and somehow we connect them all, like we're all drawing to something at the same time on a Zoom. And then that way like people could click between the artist or the artist channels or something. You know what? That's probably an app idea that no one's had yet and we could be millionaires. The uh, Art Connect app. And so what it would do is instead of connecting on the Zoom channel to your shitty webcam, it would actually jump to that artist's live stream station. And so you would slowly build up like thousands of people drawing at the same time. They don't have to even be drawing the same thing, but people could scan it like a channel, like a live stream channel. Oh my God, why am I not a programmer? Anyhow. Yes, that's my idea for tonight. I'm listening to tarot card readings uh, through my earbuds and it just keeps playing them. So I gotta pick something without words because it's very distracting. Anyways, Virgos are the best and everything's cool, so whatever. <laughs> mm. It's only seven. It's only seven. There's time. One minute left. Oh, God, this is good. <clears throat> it says not to do it, but man, is it ever tasty. Looks right at this angle. 20 seconds. We're not going to get into the conspiracy theories tonight. Things are changing so quickly. I hope you guys like this little, uh, this little thing I made down here with the Atelier Artista. Well, where is it? Right there. Right there. Wait, there it is. Okay. That thing right there. Figured out how to do that the other day thanks to Michael Dargy helping me. So you can like float like see-through screens. With this open broadcasting system, you can even have like little bangers and like, when there's a break, I could have like a five minute countdown from the break. Like you can build scenes in. It would be better to have a camera person and someone else operating that in the chat. But uh, that's the free software does all the coolest stuff and all the paid software, eh, you know, the, so what? So, you know, discoveries are being made. OBS is awesome. So I'm gonna put the Pontemoro timing, 25 minutes. I gotta start moving quicker here. Uh, I did that, though not a waste of time. Um, this is not about full rendering. It's really the values, so I'm gonna try to not get mad at myself here, but 25 minutes. We're gonna fix some of the things I saw at the break that I didn't like, like I'm gonna drop the feet down. Even though when I measure like her hip to her shoulder to the bait, okay, yes. So her hip to her shoulder is the same length as Eros's leg and uh, I'm a good inch off, that inch that I made up at the bottom. So turns out that that was a good thing to do. That might also help me uh, kick it over a little bit. No pun intended at being a foot and a leg, but uh, I'm just gonna take just a little bit of measuring here, uh, just to make that a little bit longer. I will move her face to the right as well. But other than that, I'm not gonna make any more fixes. I'm just gonna say, hey, we're going. We'll move the neck as well. It's not that kind of drawing, guys. Not that kind of drawing today. Value study. Um, an important thing to get right. I'm, I'm making my work smart because I am going to do a master copy of this piece 
eventually because I have so much time. So I've gotten out of the drawing with the uh, line charcoal now. I'm into uh, a medium charcoal pencil. There's no real reason. Maybe it's just I'm a little bit more used to drawing this way. So his heel is in alignment with the back of his head. So I'll move it over slightly, giving him kind of that lean look. Lean, not built lean, leaning. <laughs> These little characters uh, have like wide, wider, shorter limbs. I'm much better at wider, shorter than I am at tall and long and skinny. Or what the problem is, is I'm really good at tall and skinny. If someone's actually tall and skinny, and if not, I make them look like a troglodyte. Is that the right word? Yeah. Not, probably not, it's like saying midget. You're not supposed to say that. It's dwarf, damn it. I got corrected on that. In my animation class, we were talking about Mr. Dinklage. Uh, one of my students ran into him or passed him and said, hey, nice leather jacket. I think at a comic expo. And uh, he was like, cool. <laughs> so I think he's probably a really cool dude. We'll get him to model for us if we can. So that foot's gotta go a little bit lower for her. And also, uh, it is in alignment with here. So I have more space between the feet now, which I uh, kind of made a mistake on before. So let's see about this heel. What can I measure it to? Yeah, drop the heel. We'll drop the heel. The heel, uh, this is where her elbow is. This uh, brick line shooting up shows me forward is the olecranon. And behind it's his knee, the foot, okay. And straight down is the heel. So the heel might actually be in an all right place. This might just elongate the foot, what I need to do. Wait, I should look up and see that you guys can see this. Okay, and then her leg, it's, it goes forward this direction and then there's more cloth hanging over it. Okay, so I'm gonna start drawing uh, more boxy shapes, more angles. I'm not sure if that kind of cutout look, uh, if I'll be able to round it out, but I have a feeling um, it's the way to go at this point is just rather than having super soft round forms, I'll just start carving uh, with the length of this charcoal for now. This is putting much darker and less, uh, if you look, I can just kind of rub everything here, right? Just soften everything. But this leaves more of a line quality down. And although it's, uh, there's more turns and stuff, I'm just gonna keep it simple and start drawing some of the structures here. And because I'm a boy, I guess I'm going straight to the breasts. How is that possible after all these years of desensitizing myself? Anyways, it's the contour that I'm looking for. One of the issues too is that uh, here's dark now. This will have to have white on it, but I am doing the anatomy here. So across here is where the, you can see my original drawing of the chest is, but that's where the body starts to come in before it goes back out to the hips. And, and in the case of this particular piece, I can be very straight here, very straight. And there's a little roundness at the bottom. Show weight. So we can overemphasize this stuff as well.
I had said to use uh, a crutch here, a little floater, but I don't need it yet because I actually haven't put uh, the material down to make it dark. So I'm drawing a little bit more. This kind of is more my comfort zone. I feel like it's also, because it's my comfort zone, it's also where I am not allowing myself to grow. I didn't want to be a classical artist. I love it. I, what I love about it is if you do something really good and you make that illusion that fools someone's eye, they respect your skill rather than just, you know, contemporary art is just like, oh, that's a clever idea. Oh, oh I'm going to make something I actually really like. Oh, Cookie Monster in the Hokusai Wave. You guys know that piece, I hope. Um, <laughs> but that ends up only being good for the idea. And I would like to have some technical skill, at least just a small part in a piece so that, you know, number one is you could wind up in a museum without hating yourself. Like Pollock, like what a piece of, <laughs> what a piece of splatter. <laughs> like, um, you know, you can say, hey, I, I learned a skill and I made that really good and that, that makes me different from other artists who, because ideas are dime a dozen and if your whole career is off like that next clever idea, Oh, then you're just family guy, you know, which we all know is written by manatees. There is a little belly button right here. Okay. So I'm moving across, uh, that being my alignment for the hip of this leg. So in a way I'm triangulating things a little bit more. It's good enough. I didn't do it like a short pose drawing or anything. So I'm just going to sketch my way around and just kind of find joy in the little lines and the little nuances. Sometimes do a little, uh, I don't know, window shading here, you know, just zerp. I'm afraid of the heads, so I'm staying away from that right now. But I know that I can make this area strong uh, in the time given. So I'm going to do that and that will give me a little bit more confidence. I'm not learning. Uh, right now anything about how Bouguereau paints I, I can't even see, I'm not even close enough to see the nuances of warm and cool I'm just trying to get something that I can work with so that I can transfer to my painting surface like how does he make the skin look so bloody good and I look at it and there's blues and greens and pinks and yellows um, so that's gonna fill me with a lot of challenge for sure <laughs> but also a lot of joy and i hope one day to be good enough to copy him well you know i guess at this age i thought i'd be somewhere else and then i learned how hard the work is and it's incredibly humbling i don't now think the things that i learned at art school which is you're going to be famous and that's what you want i definitely don't want the attention of it and like every time i'm sometimes i'm really afraid to put stuff post stuff because it's, i know it's not good but i'm still i feel like it's okay to be vulnerable but man some of the hate you get on the old internet it does not help that little child within the artist's psyche you know that wants to impress the parent or, or just make something good that's going to take you know 30 30 years but that's also why it makes it worth doing because most people they're going to give up you know i need those people to serve me coffee i know that sounds cold but i've invested my life into this and i'm paying incredible rent so that i can keep doing this and now i'm in the nice studio cool light over me and that awesome tv and i'm making something of it i'm not resting on my laurels right and neither are you guys who are here right now number one thing practice for sure for sure practice your craft and if you can make your craft pay for the practice i know some of you guys are pretty smart at doing that um but for me like running a business i i lost sight a lot of the times of that shut down which is scaring the crap out of me financially uh it forces me to say hey i have to 
still turn this into something. And maybe because I'm running the art school, I'm not making as much art as I should. Here's me now, no excuse, still here. Which brings me to last week. I had attempted to start this uh, cast last week. Honestly, set up, ready to do it. The power went out at C Space. It's the only reason there wasn't one last week. So I took that time and I went home and I went to sleep. I'm gonna shove uh, the arm back a little bit. It's because of the length I'm doing things here and, and these alignments actually, yeah, vertically, these do line up. If this is true, this is true, right? So I'm just doing a little problem solve. Anyhow, the power honestly went out. If you saw my Instagram, it scared the crap out of me, but it was a good thing I was here um, because I had heard out the window, I had heard a large kind of cracking sound. I had my windows open because of some of the work we're doing in here is a little bit stinky. Uh, and it was helpful when they restarted to know what order things went off and outside my window is the chiller. So the fact that I heard, so the butt actually a little higher up, I had said to lower it, but maybe her butt's not long enough too. So we got to just balance these parts out. Anyways, I had heard the chiller go and I was able to t tell the C-Space staff that knows how to turn the building back on. And I was like, perfect, I'm booking out of here. Like, I need a rest, it's been a hell of a week. That was the day we filmed Jeff's uh, most excellent Zoom. I bought Zoom so that the teachers could do another one, but um, we gave it away, we gave it away. Keep everyone interested, just like this is free. Hopefully it's worth your time to come here and check stuff out. We can't give everything away for free. God, I wouldn't be able to pay the rent if that's how this thing went. But it, I thought it went really well for, for his work because he's focused like we're doing here and seated, it works pretty good. And you know, he can have a conversation a little bit. But paying for Zoom and then uh, managing the cameras and all that, it doesn't really seem worthwhile when we could just do live streams which are pretty much, except for my time, uh, they don't cost me more. I don't have to pay a subscription to do, but they're also a lot of work. There's preparatory time. And in that case, we got to pay for the model. So being closed is a little bit easier in order to do these things. I don't have to arrange the whole studio. It is an absolute mess right now. And it's pissing me off. My Virgo spent, uh, senses are on high right now. What are you gonna do? So I am drawing, drawing now, simplifying shapes still. We'll ascribe some values in the next session, but we'll take 10 more minutes to just get something down that makes some semblance of shape. Value will make the form right? The hierarchy that um, I ascribe to is shape, value, edges, color. No color today. When it's a painting, color. No color today. And that's not from any one place that I learned that. That's something that I put together over time for myself. A lot of art is you kind of inventing your rules, your, your manifesto of how you're going to create your work. You know, there might even be a reason um, to bring this over two sessions. But for now, let's just assume we got to work fast because we're doing a study. I remember earlier, this was the darkest value. I'm actually using this to sharpen my pencil right now. There are a few uh, lighter areas in here, like folds, but for the most part, it's pretty dark. When I start, I just gotta get material on here. Darks, we just keep adding more and more dark. Um, 
I don't like saying um, but I feel like I just gotta keep talking, so that's that's the rule. I watched a Jeffrey Watts video the other day. Holy crap. Not only is that guy a good drawer, but he's really good at talking while he draws. This is a whole other life skill. I don't think you guys realize, the fact that I can even do it is amazing. I don't think you realize, like it takes two parts of your brain. I cannot um, paint and talk. When I paint, uh, silence. I, I don't even listen to music. It's too hard, unless I'm like throwing down a background or something. It's just too hard for me. So the structures are more refined than up here. But I want, my goal is to get the same overall look. So let's just soften down these darks. I'll have to add more material on top. And for that, I'll probably use some compressed charcoal. Part of the reason I'm doing this too is so that there's not a lot of excess material just sitting on here that I'm going to rub my hand through. You know? Um, this kind of shaped in this... Uh, sorry, brain fart. Maybe it's the whiskey. This kind of uh, dark that I already have on here from the previous drawing of the vine charcoal, it needs to be darker than that, but it's already starting to happen. There's nothing really on the skin. There's a couple parts where I'll put tone down and I'll erase out and allow the paper to come through like his bicep and stuff. But other than that, there's a lot of material put on here. Darker tone, as I said earlier, would have been better. Uh, I had considered using some Strathmore, but this is like non-committal right now. I don't want to I'm not making a masterpiece here, so I don't want to spend on a $6 sheet of paper. And that's the truth of how cheap I am. In fact, I have a bunch of these pads available. They're pretty, so they're pretty inexpensive. And if you want one and you can come down for a retail opportunity, it would really help me to sell them because I have no way of making money right now. I am not, uh, I'm teaching one more class on Friday via Zoom, a figure class. And that has worked out because that class is heavily uh, lectured. Yeah, I don't like how that looks. Um, but not really, we tried the Zoom. It's not really fitting for what we do here. The students would need the same kind of system as I have in order to make it work. And that's ridiculous to ask of every person. This finger would be shorter. Okay. Let's start doing up the back here. He does, I'm just gonna put the core shadow in on this butt too. I'm not at that stage yet, but it helps me find my shapes. I mean, the way Bougaro did this, he's, the resolution of the, the fatty pads on the lower back, as it turns up, is remarkable. A lot of artists don't like Boogie because his subject matter is pretty cheesy. Find, we'll probably find out he was worse than Picasso with women. I don't know. I don't care about that with my artists. I mean the ones that I like. I don't care about their lifestyles. You know, you make, you, you make it work. <laughs> Whatever your life is to make your dream come true, just make it work. I mean, he wasn't a serial killer, at least. That we know of. Maybe he was Jack the Ripper, I don't know. A little bit different time, a little bit different place. But not much different. Okay. Hey, hey, moving on up to the scary bits. It's okay to be afraid, bunny. It's okay. Four minutes. Just keep tackling the stuff. Now, there are no lines in this painting, really. He does a little bit of edge work. Uh, 
which is quite nice. But this is becoming a little too dry, a little too illustrative. And so you gotta be careful with that. I'm just gonna take a measure here. Oh, interesting. Interesting. This length is equal to this length. So I'm gonna bring his elbow back a little bit. I had to slide the whole thing a little bit to make the hand big enough. Which is okay. It's supposed to be in alignment with the toe, but we're going to fake it a little bit. You heard it here first. That's your artistic license at work. It's time now. Time and monster. Oh God. Okay. That taste of whiskey and uh, wrong it just sank to the bottom just sank to the bottom that's a mistake the uh, there's a ver her her palm where it's touching I'm just gonna in my mind drop a plumb line to find out where this is in a relationship it, it lines up to the toe okay I'm pretty close I'm gonna just commit her hand is curling and a little bit I'll describe the, the arm more curling this way because I don't have I'm not doing uh, anatomy the same way I'm not it's just got to be finger shape for for this type of study oh my god I am sorry guys I am not paying attention to where I am in space let me tilt this down a little bit I'm doing all this stuff my producer's not telling me you can't see it down here it looks great. We'll see what it looks like at the end. Why does it look so different on YouTube? Okay. My producer. <laughs> Just tilt down a little bit more. Hey. Okay. Anyhow. Uh, just general hand shape, right? Value study. These values, uh, as they meet up to the arm, there's a lost edge there. And that's part of what we're looking for. I think is the sweet spot. So if I was to put it in order, okay, and, and I'm always teaching the same side, even where this part of the forearm crosses his forearm, lost edge. To me, after going to Holland and I went there to study Rembrandt, in the most part, I love a lot of other Dutch painters. It's those lost edges that are really impressive, okay? Like in my valuation of art, I think that the consideration of the edges, hard edge, which is our line, is the lowest level. But the first one you do, I'm drawing hard edges. Then as you start to smudge or as things start to be less illustrative, you get the firm edge, which is really nice. And I, it's gonna be, but I'm gonna keep going because, ha, huh, it's my show. Ha <laughs> um, ha. Because I really want to explain this theory, and then, you know, if Jeff and Keith and those guys want to argue later, or we'll talk it out, um, just my observations, and it might help some of you who haven't looked at it that way. But you've got your hard edge, and then your firm edge, and your soft edge is, is what a lot of artists do, is they just make everything, which has to do more with value, middle and ambiguous, like everything's smoky, because they don't really know where to put things. Our hard edge, especially with a cast shadow, makes something pop off the page, right? It helps that illusion. Our uh, firm and soft edge makes something look more rounded, so it starts to give that three-dimensional look. Our soft edge, you know, uh, soft edge will be along his butt and stuff like that, big, big planes. It's ambiguous, it's smoky, it's nice in painting, it's very easy to do, but it's the lost edge where you know there's an arm, but, but you don't have to draw that line. To me, that's the sweet spot because it's less of what we know and want to convey in the language of art, but it's so much more how we see. And so when I went to see Rembrandt and all that, like he would do a lot of more hard edges on the eyes and then everything else would be like smoky. Or if you look at Leonardo da Vinci, the sufumato, that's smoky. It's that lost edge where you don't need to draw the jawline, where you don't need to do that. And that happens a lot, not just in value, but how do you do that with color? And so when you break apart those edges, 
between his forearm and her forearm. If you have a replica of this piece, you can look at it right now and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Those two blend and become the same. Now that is particular to how humans see. And I think it's very valuable to chase after those lost edges because they're what makes you feel something is more real than it is because it's behaving how we see unless like an in focus camera lens or something. And so I love the looking for the lost edges. I think the lost edges are the, the top dog in terms of edges, right? If you draw everything hard edge, you've got the Simpsons. You've got line and fill. That's what I'm doing right now. I say all this in, in a way that I'd like to expose as uh, do as I say, not as I do. Because I come from an animation background uh, and cartoon background. And so the reason I started learning classical art was for more sophistication, to get away from there. <coughs> and yet that's my wheelhouse. And it's where I'm comfortable. But also the way I'm drawing right now might be a huge limitation in that I treat painting the same way. And that is not allowing me to grow in the way I want to. So lost edges and softening things are a lot of times what I'm trying to go after now in my studies. So there, I'm just telling you what I think is true. I could be wrong. And if you're still listening, I just appreciate that. It's nice to know somebody cares. Okay, now I'll take the break. I just wanted to get that out. So, I mean, the, the hard part's left up here. I'll draw just a little bit more, but I need to start uh, with like two or three more sittings. I need to start knocking in the values after. So it might look a little bit blocky. I wish I had six hours to do this, but two, two and a half should be fine. I'm gonna take a five minute break, gonna wash my hands because I need them to be clean. And once I start, I'll, I'll draw some core shadows and stuff in here in the next round, but once I start putting values in, uh, clean hands, floater paper. Take five kids. <coughs> Woo! I got a really dry throat. Maybe it's whiskey throat. All right. Having a good time. Where's my mask? There we go. I'm the only one in the building, but I still need to wear a mask inside. She's a Louisa. Part of me wishes I did this on Strathmore now. Damn it! But for two sessions. Alright, mask off. Mask off. Mask off. Mask off. Pandemic.
One minute. Take a picture, guys, and if you go to Instagram stories, you'll see the chaos. Oh no, the phone's dead. I can't. It sucks. Well, we'll try to revive it later. <coughs> Too cheap to buy a new phone, and I'm not even sure I'd be happy with a thirteen hundred dollars for an iPhone. When did it go from spending a hundred bucks on a phone, good old Nokia or Flips? to what I used to spend not that long ago on a freaking laptop. In fact, that's how much I'd spend on a car. Like, 1300 bucks sounds like a, you know, a Datsun. Maybe an old Honda Civic. Reliable! All right, let's get the show on the road here. What I need is to learn how to be so much more entertaining, where everyone's just like, did you see? Like, did you see Bunny's drawing? Live stream? Oh, it's so fun and funny. I think I'm just, I don't take that much seriously, but I also don't want to fuck around. <laughs> All right, I think this was the pencil I was using. Let's see. Good enough. Good enough. I'll start using the used mast as my floaters, I think, in the future. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of whiskey has made a, the difference. There is a very good chance I'm gonna go way past nine tonight because uh, this isn't. I know how much I can do in the time that I have, and I need to get further, in my opinion. And also, I need to make sure I'm completely sober by the end of that. Okay. We're back to it. I'm not listening to music or anything, though it might help. Got to find out where this little freaker's hand is. Or his head. Uh, I feel pretty good about where this hand is. So there's a little bit of space coming off there for the jaw. Uh, maybe use like little ovals or something. To make a kid's face look cute, you drive its chin back and you make this angle that goes up towards the nose. So as long as the nose kind of juts out and they're always up tilted, kids' noses, you see that? Uh, they have that nice big uh, top lip and then just boop, so look at that. I mean, I don't know, maybe I should zoom in a little bit because I'm doing kids' faces now, but um, you can see how effective that is that angle back. Now, the same tricks are used for drawing pretty girls, like female faces. Here we'll add some more fat. Look, it's just a little fat face. I'm not trying to get a likeness here. Like, who is this kid? Anyways, I'll tell you right now, long since dead. Long since dead. That, but uh, we got a good little face here. The forearm grows out of the face. So I think, I might have to drag that back. That forearm is looking pretty, I mean, thick, fat baby forearms. But 
Might be a little bit too big from the face. Maybe the face needs to come out a little bit further. But like I said, it's value study. I don't want to get too crazy here. We'll bring it out further. We'll cartoon it up. Maybe we'll discover in this that that's Boogie's secret. He could have been a great animator. Whoa. And swoop. Swoop. Have a nice forehead. Soft, big forehead. I rounded out the nose a little bit too much, but that's, you know, with all the portraits I've done for money, I haven't done too many kids' faces. Probably because at that time, no one in my family was having kids. And I have a very small family as it is. There you go. Just a little bit older kid. We'll put the eye on there too. Just because. It's not really, for the value study, important. Makes him look a little demonic anyhow. There's some beautiful green reflections. I mean, let's just say then that Boogie here, just a master of the quality of light that I like. I honestly, I mean, I'll, I'll drop to my knees in front of one of his paintings. Don't get me wrong. The Church of Boogie. It's, it's far better than Bob Ross. We can all agree on that. Well, maybe I'll dispute myself on that because Bob's positivity. Oh, it's looking demonic. Cute nose. Anyhow, let's not get caught up in this. I'll just draw an oval for the ear. Good enough for this purpose but it's the the color and quality of light in these pieces you know okay do you know do i even know i don't know anymore drop his head down this angle uh comes out around this angle so if i shoot a line across the fingers you see what i'm saying you get some sort of structure here. And then we'll drop the shoulders down. So we need to uh, get this wing in here. There is some space between the arm and the wing. You know, I'll fake it. I'll just, you know, yeah, that's where the wing is. Because we, we are just looking for value shapes. I'm not looking for every single feather here. That's good enough. That's good enough. Where the ear is, is where the turn is. This is a couple little lumps there. And to make it more express, uh, rather than just going straight, bring it up. I'm, I'm taking ornithology right now and I haven't had a lot of time to study, but I have noticed how the first feather on a wing is always shorter than the next feather. And, and artists might have noticed that too in the Greek toe. And it's kind of the same idea, I think, with feathers. I don't know what those are called. Yet, as I haven't had time to study. Right now we're in ornithology, it's a lot about dinosaurs. Because I'm studying the biology of birds, not the types or their songs or any of that crap. It's not crap, it's just that I, that's not why I'm doing it. And I like dinosaurs. So here's what happened. The reason why she's not as close to the side, I now realize is this is shifted over further uh, on the page than it should be. Wouldn't be the first time that happened. It does drive me crazy when artists don't take the blame or they're like, the model wasn't there. And they, they try to make the model move as if they can't just move their seat. And the same thing is, is when someone's and I can't name I can't name some artists that I know, but like I meant to do that bull bullshit of uh, artists and their and their crappy compositions because they're too lazy to plan something out. That's planning. That's what you do first. Then you blow it up, and then you do this before it's a painting, right? Like it's your job to make it fit in the freaking frame. 
Ooh, Keith, Keith, that's a good comment. Sorry, I just looked up mushrooms drawing. That could probably be a YouTube channel. I would uh, not be great at that. That would be very difficult for me. So there's a branch that goes up. That's a dark value. And uh, I don't know, because I'm here, I'm just drawing it. It kind of goes like that too, whatever. That, that's my Bob Ross. I'll be like, yeah, whatever. He's like, happy little tree. I'm like, ah. I was alive in the 90s. Who gives a SHIT on this, you know? It's better to burn out than to fade away Nirvana fans. Uh, his blonde hair sits off from the background, but it's like wavy and fun. So I just kind of draw like that. He's got Elvis curl on the front. Damn, Boogie. Ahead of your time, my friend. Uh, before the pandemic hit, I was uh, very excited. I put myself on a trip and I, uh, I travel alone a lot. It actually makes life easier because whenever I travel with people, they don't, they're not into art as much as me. And so I like to spend a lot of time at the museums and I meet crazy people and friends, you know, um, so that adventure is really good. But, uh, when I, I even got into the Bougaro show for free because of who I met, I met like the head of the websites for all the, he's like, I'll get you in. Eventually they were to kick me out of the Bougaro show, but he got me uh, like 20% off my book and stuff because he was a member. It was awesome. I think too, I mean, quite honestly, I, I got a little close to some of the Bougaros. I'm not going to lie. I was taking a lot of photos. I might have touched one. Okay. Just trying to be honest with you guys. I went back more than once, but it was a really awesome show to see them in the flesh. And actually this piece was there, but not the full size piece the color study or the, no, it was a replica. Someone wanted it, but they wanted it about this big. Um, I'll be going a little bit bigger, 30 by 60 or something like that. But I believe the actual piece is quite large. Like often his people were actual size or three quarter size. They're quite large in the paintings. Okay, his hair's getting whack here. Holy, yeah. I'm convinced now that I'm much better on camera after a whiskey. This is very sad for me because it means a lifetime of alcoholism. It's a lot easier to talk though, I tell you. And I'm kind of laughing in my head, but I also don't have the um, earbuds in anymore. I was getting a little too serious. I was hoping that I could like multitask and get in my audible because I pay that monthly fee on Audible, which is way more than I would have ever paid for Netflix. Fuck Netflix. Netflix is assholes. Get rid of it. If you have it, go. Get rid of it. Don't do, oh, look at that. Nailed the eye, Keith. I finally put it in the right place. Only took 42 years, but now I made him evil. Um, I always put the eye in the wrong place. And it's taught that it's halfway through the head, but I was measuring again today and it's not true. I'm sorry. It's above the halfway line. I taught it like that, but it's not true, man. I'm like, how does everyone's chin is bigger than the rules we learned? Screw that mess. <laughs> my, my guy's like a little bit chubbier and more pissed off than boogies. But that's what makes it fun. This was supposed to be a value study. I'm definitely going over today. But I'm not going to make a complete drawing and you don't have to stay. This will be archived. If I say, hopefully, if I say anything really crazy though, I will delete it. I don't have my favorite tool either, my eraser tool, so that's enough for the kid right value study so we got to start laying some darks down but i'm going to move over now the hand is next and then i'll i'll try to get her head in and then from there we'll just block it in you know um it's only eight 
Still got at least an hour. Let's see how we do. His finger rises above his head. I'm looking at the negative space in between here. I think uh, when drawing a hand, don't try to draw, uh, like, I don't know, tubes. My technical term. I hate when people draw the fingers too much. That's not how we see. I mean, a hand is a lot of times too in motion. And a lot of um, novice. That's probably the best way to say it. A lot of, I'm drawing the space between right now, actually. I'm not drawing the hand, I'm drawing the negative space because the light and dark is more important to me than the anatomy, honestly. He's got, there's some fingers there, whatever, right? This is a value study. It's so much better to look good from 50 feet away than it is from two inches away. Because if you don't look good from 50 feet away, no one's gonna get within two inches to look and be like, how the hell did you make that? Like, go into a museum. Anyone, thought, thought experiment here. Any person is like, eh, not that one, not that one, not that one. Like the room where the Mona Lisa is, you'll just like blaze through it. Eh, not that one, not that one. In fact, you would look over in the Mona Lisa if there wasn't every single person staring at that freaking thing. My point being is that it's got a, the thing that draws you in is a product of having good shape, good design and good values from afar. And that doesn't mean you have to draw a good fingernail. Half the stuff in the Louvre, it, it's mural painting with a brush. They are these massive pieces. Okay, wait, I gotta use my brain for a second. There are these massive pieces that, I'm just angling this up to what I see on the board. Okay. this. Normally I would be like, don't cheat with your line. But today we cheat. We're gonna use this as a straight edge. Um, there are these massive pieces like Delacroix and stuff, so awesome, but they're huge. They're murals, so they have to look good from away because they're not spending 50 hours like, oh, I got better get the finger right on this one. In fact, Bouguereau's paintings are also pretty huge. Like huge. I don't paint that big. I don't know if it's a product of people not being able to afford the real estate or the canvases, but we're working pretty small. Unless you're like a hyper realist, you're like, oh, uh, people are only gonna like it if it's 50 feet and looks super freaking real. I love looking at that stuff, but I would hate to do it. That would make me not a happy guy for sure. Like not like Chuck Close stuff, but more, more internet famous crap. Okay, put a little point. Good enough, good enough. That's actually even too small of a shape to be perfectly honest. I think I'm, I'm going a little too much here because still just values, right? We'll put the, you put the details on top. I'm getting lost in my own work guys. I apologize in advance. A testament to Canadian made whiskey in a product that says do not drink with alcohol. Too much transition. Okay, let's go. okay, I'm afraid. Let's do it, let's do her face. She's so beautiful that it's gonna be hard for me to make this look good because that is not my specialty. We'll see here. I'll probably add 10 years onto this woman's age. I just did it. <laughs> like the neckline right there. Okay. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit more. It'll be funnier. And I'll just drag it down. I'll move my position to fit. There we go. I hope that's in focus, guys. I can't see on the screen. Uh, it's quite small, so. It's not, you don't wanna droop underneath the girl's uh, jaw too far or pinch up the chin. They look like little witches if you do that. A young, vibrant face would be nearly straight back. But this girl's got a little bit of that Ruben-esque shape. Also has a tilt towards the nose. Not as much as a little baby, uh, Eros. But 
definitely tilted back. Whereas a man would be a more straight thing. The mandible has 20% more bone on a male. And you can take that one to the bank because I did enough research. I almost lost my job over talking about the sexual differences biologically speaking when I was teaching at an institution. You know, you get written up and stuff if you don't toe the party line, let's say. God, I hope this girl ends up being cute enough on this drawing. Okay, so it, when drawing women, uh, I always say the top lip goes out in front of the bottom lip and it makes them look like it might not be factual sometimes but it makes them look really good and between the nose and the chin is where the uh, bottom lip comes up so that might be a little extreme because I also don't have uh, a strong point right now but that's the idea let's do the halfway thing that puts her eye right about there. I'll, uh, I'll buy it for now. I'll buy it. Because we're not drawing this bit. We're just placing it. It's a little far back, but... This is not the uh, language. This is not what goes on inside my head when I'm drawing at all. It's good sometimes to hear maybe what someone would say, like the knee bone is connected to the hip bone. I'm seriously trying to fill space. But I don't talk to myself in this way or uh, do it in such a way to use language to figure out what I'm drawing. It's a much more free uh, zone for me. In fact, I'm, I'm probably worrying way more about the day's problems and other things gives me time to uh, be philosophical maybe so this eye doesn't even look real to me anymore maybe because there's no eyebrow there but she's pissed let's slope the forehead and we'll bring the hairline down now this looks like a friend of mine actually Annie which is also the nickname of my aunt. I called my aunt Cheryl Annie. I still do to this day, actually. The other day I told her she was a good Annie. <laughs> I, all the women in my family are redheads. So maybe it has to do with like orphan Annie. I don't know, it was when I was a kid. My brother couldn't pronounce my name, so he called me Bambi. And at the same time, Disney had that most horrific of murder films. But I was Bambi before I was Bunny. Ew. Now that I listened to what I just said, it's like, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, let's put the dark value of her hair. Um, yeah, she's got too many years on her on this chin. I was drawing the negative space, actually. I wasn't drawing... Um, her chin, I was drawing that little white gap. And that's going to be important in about one sitting. Because I want to uh, put the white in there. I'm actually quite excited about that because when I was thinking about what I was going to do, like I knew I was going to do this Bouguereau copy. Because honestly now the way I look at things is, what? okay, what do you need to do? <laughs> and uh, what's the next thing? Okay, and then what? And it's like, all right, right? Like just, just because we're on lockdown doesn't mean that uh, I don't have tons of crap to do all the time. So if I do something else that doesn't relate to moving myself forward, I'm being a little bit crazy. I would love to make more work for myself and not get done what I'm supposed to do. But this helps me towards getting uh, my painting done. Sitting here and studying this now will help me solve problems in the painting. And if you don't believe that's true, I would put forth to you, do your bloody bar drawings, people. <laughs> I want to do this really good. Well, this is what you're going to have to do to do that. 
You can't drive a Ferrari before getting your driver's license, okay? I definitely wouldn't. If you're a rich kid, maybe you can, but... <sighs> okay. So, because I put the darkest value in, and I've got two more minutes, I'm going to draw some of the tree trunk, which in Bougaro's case was probably, the background was probably painted after. Um, you know, and it's done loosely. If you look at them in person, it's, they're, it's just a whole different painting style. And it's beautiful, by the way. It's very loose. It's very free. You know, if I was to do it today, I would put frisket um, on my painting surface for sure. Um, if you don't know what frisket is, that's like a what uh, airbrush painters use. It's like putting clear tape over it just to protect the surface. So I would like let it dry and then I put frisket over it. Um, that's not how I'm going to do this one though. When I when I get to it, as terrifying as this is, like is this a year commitment? <laughs> I think my it'll be closer to a color study uh, when all is said and done, like kind of blotchy. I don't think I'll go for full full uh, resolution. We'll see. I'm not trying to make a painting that I'm gonna pretend is Bouguereau. I'm just going to try to make a painting that I can learn a lot from. We have a minute left till this thing beeps. Hopefully I can get the rest of the trees in. And if they're not perfect, it doesn't matter. This is a detail that's not that important in a value study. I can already see that this isn't in the right place because of where it's pointing to her head. It's close, but it's not perfect. So in a, in a study, I would try to be very, very accurate. In fact, I would recommend any of you, if you're painting, the point of painting is about color mixing and putting those things in the right place. And it's not, don't waste your time on the drawing. You gotta get it close enough. Like we're not trying to uh, rip people off here. So three seconds left. Oh boy. Let's take a small break. Five minutes. I'm gonna zoom it back out. I think I might have lost you guys there for a minute. And tilt that up. It's a break and my hands are clean. Uh, so I'm gonna pin this back up and sit back and analyze a little bit. The whiskey's gone, so it's only sobriety from here on in. Boy, my little demon looks, my little cherub looks more like a demon. Now, tilt. Tilt, you little freak. I think that had more of an effect on me than I would have liked. Okay, let's see what we got here. One, two, is that enough? All right, I gotta step back. Still going for the value study though. Yeah. I mean, it's closer. My, uh, the face of my chair is not big enough or uh, far enough back, I think. His ear's in the right place, but his face is a little too far forward. But in the next stages, we're just gonna, gonna try to match the values. I'm not drawing every leaf tonight. That's crazy talk. Uh, but I will draw the core shadows and some of these shadow shapes in order to get us closer in uh, value matching at this point. Well, I'm still dead. I won't be charged.
Well, I got two and a half minutes. I don't know where you guys are at here. I'm gonna see a man about a horse, wash my hands anyhow. Yes, because I'm gonna get smudgy. I think that this mic is so good that you could have heard me walking down the hall. Like he said. Alright. I'm so stoked. One minute left. Zooming out, you can see my studio. Here we go. This works phenomenal. We'll have to build in in future weeks how we're only doing Bugaro copies for the next five years. Um, just kidding. Okay. Time's a ticking. I hope you're still with me. 25 minutes, pump the Moro timing, and also we'll tilt this sucker down again. The, oh, revealing. You guys can see how this is like r tilting right over my head. I'm using a magic arm. Uh, that'll have to do. Let's just see how it looks. There's a delay, so I look up at the screen and it still hasn't actually tilted. A little bit better. I'll bring it up. Okay. I just keep to get it to line up. I just move my chair. It seems to be a lot easier. So I'm gonna uh, chase uh, some of the shadow shapes, and then I'm just gonna try to find uh, these four values, really. So we'll go up the back, underneath the arm. There's a little bit of a shadow shape here. So all of this needs to be darkened. Even along the arm. I mean, I, that was a mistake, but we'll just follow it. That's like the core shadow along the forearm. It's like little fat rolls here too. We'll just put some in there. This will all be uh, softened out with some sort of tool like this or a chamois. I want my, oh, that works really nice, actually. Keith got me to get these things. I gave the majority of them away last Christmas. But I kept, oh no, I had another set. I kept one or two. So it goes up. I feel like his tip is like way too big down here. That's ridiculous. I don't know how I didn't see that earlier. So I'll just trim the top of the leg down. It's not really going to solve the problem. We'll just make it murky a little bit. Okay, I'm going to squint my eyes and when I do, I'm back to seeing how this leg shape, just like up here, 
has material on it. So I'm just going to put material on it, put material on it. People get all caught up, oh, it's light here and all that. You don't need to, especially not for what we're doing here. Get the little butt clap. I squint my eyes and I do see that there's a light there. It's not that light. But let's just get block in the core and the cast shadows. For example, this wing is darker than this wing. So to make this wing pop forward, I just need to add some value to this wing. From her finger, down the trap, and across the back of his neck, there's a light right there, but the rest is in shadow. If I squint, his hair looks brown. So yeah, there's little curls and stuff, doesn't matter. Not at this point and not in a value study. And if it's paint, you put lights on top of dark anyhow. It does look evil in my drawing. That transition is not so great in terms of the you know 10 values, but um, here is very light. Where's my, my favorite eraser, where is that? It's probably in the car. This will work for now. Okay. Squinting my eyes, even uh, an arm in shadow or a darker arm still has shadow. Sometimes Boo Girl would uh, blue things up as they went away or uh, make them darker or, or more misty or lighter to give an illusion. So he gray things out as they go away. They don't have as much chroma. One of the tricks that he would employ. We have to use our sense of what we can see and describe in black and white, of course. The forearms are obviously a little bit darker because they see the sun. When I squint, this area actually blends in with the green below. We've got the arms. There's a shadow on top of his leg coming probably from her arm. And it kind of meets up to down here. It's interesting. Interesting. Because this never existed. No child was probably even modeled uh, in this position. Like, okay, four-year-old, get your leg up on mom. No way. Jose. Jose. To keep it simple, I'm just going to do the bottom of the foot. I'm not going to separate the toes. I don't have time for this. I might later. There's a slight little triangle on the toe there of light. I'm squinting my eyes to see it. And in order, so I'll smudge it a little bit, but in order to show the side of the foot, I actually add more dark. I add more material beside it. This order of things, oh, I just broke that. This order of things works really well. Using dark to show light. Oh, heartbreak. I've got a lot of these tips. Let me find another dark here. Okay. Same as if I want to show the, uh, fabric folds. I do them by adding more dark, adding more material. I guess that's not really intuitive. All of this is in shadow, so I need material on there. It's darker than the paper. Remember from up here how dark everything is? I need to add it. There's a couple spots in the ground that catch the light slightly, like a little triangle down here. I can just erase that out later. But for now, just add dark. When I squint my eyes, all this grassy area behind Eros is dark. So I need to darken it. There's no way around this here. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's get serious here. I 
I definitely miss having you guys here in person. <laughs> There's definitely a lot less chatter. I def I don't have to talk. That's great. I'm worried that in the future I'll watch this and be like, you sound like a crazy man. You should have been a stand-up comedian. Anyways, it's what I got to do. It's what I got to do right now. But the thoughts in my head are not necessarily the words coming out of my mouth. It's a great time to be philosophical, though. The way this world's going, like, who knows if I'll ever be a teacher again. That would be actually kind of interesting. My dream is to actually just be a full-time artist. I love teaching. It's very fulfilling. It would be cool to not have to do it, though. Not that I don't want to teach people. It'd just be awesome to just do my own work all the time. It seems pretty selfish, but... I fell into teaching. I just happened to be a good communicator and good at conveying the ideas. So it wasn't the career choice that I was making. I didn't go to art school to be a teacher. A lot of people do though. Statistically, it's like two to 3%. I just discovered, I took some classes at ACAD. They're like, hey, would you like to teach this? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll try teaching that. And then I really enjoyed it. It's, it's awesome to see the light bulbs go off for students. Okay, so you know what? Good enough. I can't get too caught up in this stuff. I'm looking for my darkest darks right now and just kind of drawing their shapes because I need to step forward in, uh, you know, where is this arm? Where does this arm live in terms of its values? Oh, I'll move up a little bit. Cross the shoulder. So I'm not cross hatching. You might be able to hear this. I sound like Jeff right now. But um, it's just because the edge is a lot more feathered down here. Rather than drawing it following the direction of the form. By, by kind of like a, a cross hatch stroke, I'm a little bit more ambiguous. And I am putting value on it. I'm not sure if this charcoal uh, smooths as much as the other one that I just broke. Let's see. The General's is quite nice. This is, I don't even know what brand this is. I'm just softening the edge and then I go towards getting the value down. Now this value needs to be actually darker. So I'll have to put more material on top. Along the underside of the arm. the tricep so I'm gonna to pull towards the light because it, it's kinda of gives me a little bit more of the effect of, of the turning of the form as we're running low on time you know still it could be darker this is gonna everything I'm erasing here right now I'm just gonna make pretty much an even white uh, the brightest value even though there's a mountain and stuff back there I'm not gonna worry about that because it's all about capturing the four main values it's not about getting every leaf in there I don't care not for this at least behind her there's some grasses whatever I'm not trying to copy the grasses exactly just the values there's dirt it's very strange it's like grass and dirt and it goes along the top of this uh, concrete block or maybe she's sitting on some Roman street or I guess Greek Eros you guys tell me I don't know my mythology that well it's not Norse it's not Chinese there that's my knowledge it, the uh, block when I squint my eyes is actually quite close to the blue but not uh, as chromatic in the painting. So you gotta squint your eyes down to be able to see this stuff. We get fooled by color very easily. Richness of color fools us in thinking it's coming closer. When in fact, chrominance, 
So there's this whole thing like uh, cool colors recede, warm colors advance, but also chroma advances. So the more gray something is, the more far uh, it looks like it's going away. So I'm squinting my eyes as I do this. Now I'm kind of like painting with shadows and whatever's on this thing. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Still reads as lighter. This here though is really dark. Really, really dark. It's like I just put more material. More material. We just build up more and more material, right? This is how classical drawing is kind of done too, but, but more <laughs> on purpose, <laughs> you know, not just, ah, all right, there we go. Okay, that's good. Because you only really just have that, that light and dark values to deal with, but you can do so much with that. And it's a practice. Like you can spend 20 hours on a bar drawing I don't think it's worth it after you've done it a couple times, but you really realize your grit and whether or not you're professional. You'd be like, oh my God. So this is, if I want it to look this good, this is what I have to do. Yes, that's a fact. You do have to do that. If you don't like doing it, you're in the wrong field, okay? Get out of town. You don't have to do anything in contemporary art. Just write the word hand. You don't need to draw one. Anyhow, um, her flush tone is darker than the paper in terms of its value. So, look, I'm gonna have to darken it. This is the nature of the beast. I can, there's a fingerprint right there. I can uh, take things out pretty easily. So you can see how that builds it up, but it seems odd that I'd be darkening her because she's not black in value, but she's not as bright as this paper. So I can start using these areas to lighten. So if I want to, uh, just pick a little bit along her shoulder. I can just erase it out. You know, painting works the same way. You can wipe it away. Her whole face is in shadow. Contrary to what might feel comfortable, even though she's yellowish like this paper in flesh tone, she's just not this bright. And without putting this on, I can't make that white behind seem super duper bright. With painting, you only have so much movement and you really have to reduce even what your eyes can see. You can only make something as light as white canvas or white paint, right? So we don't have any luminousness. So if you want something to seem really bright and white's all you have, you need to press the darks. That's why I make her hair basically black. I would love to go deeper than that, but it would take a long time to draw in all these little holes. I can dot them in if I want, but there's really, for what we're doing here, no point. I'm most excited about putting that white in, which will be in the very last session. So we will, there's eight more minutes and I will do one more session um, for fun. <laughs> so I'll go over the time tonight. You don't have to stick with me, but it might be worth it. I'm having fun right now, so. Um, it's that first part of the drawing I think that matters the most. Getting it right, putting it in. I kind of, this uh, study up here was extra in a lot of ways. Like I would be a, a kind of a session ahead if I hadn't done that. But all of this is gonna help me as I'm looking and studying. I, I mean, I could probably do two or three more here before I even start the painting. People just wanna jump in the painting. That's it, you know? But don't be afraid to study your subject, to make pencil copies and to do a small color copy. And the same should be done for your actual work. You shouldn't just be like, yeah, I, got, I nailed it. Everything I do is so good that I'm just gonna 
go to town right now and that's going to be my finished piece because that's not what great artwork is is made of you know to a lesser extent sure picasso and some of these what i would consider more uh free i don't know i don't want to say lazy but just expressive art where it's like that the pureness of the line or the abstract expressionism of it like that's a different thing for sure like here i'm trying to study the body i want to learn how boogie does his colors so well you know there's a different purpose so i'm erasing out where it's light i might need to uh, jump in here now oh there's the pencil i was using and put in uh these dark tree shapes now i'm not copying exactly his leaves i don't care it's the value that I'm after. In fact, her leg comes out here, but because its value is only slightly lighter there, this, I can all do the same. It has to be darker than Eros. I mean, that's the stipulation. It just has to be darker than that. All of it can, it can come and go as it pleases. I'm definitely gonna do one of these where I don't talk. So be prepared for a happy day for you guys. I mean, there's little sticks and twigs that are coming up here. But all this detail, what it does is when someone starts to look around the piece, they start to take delights in those little things. It doesn't, it's like bonus to the composition, you know? It's like, oh, wow, look at this little one. Like, that's the people who are trapped now will look closer. And sometimes those little details become the real, like, once they get in, the real sales on why that's so good. Like, oh, my God, look at the, the lizard in the lower left corner kind of thing. There's no lizard in this one, but it doesn't, you don't spend the whole time on the lizard to make a painting about this, right? Like, what tells the story? Think about how it's kind of like filmmaking even. My, uh, I think that's about right. It still needs to do what the little study did. I'm not gonna worry about every leaf here. That would be crazy for this amount of time. I got five minutes here. But in terms of its value, it should start matching what's up there. The jump between them should not be so far off. There's like that shape up here. Like it, do, it doesn't have, for me, it doesn't have to be leaf at this point. Some behind her. Yeah, there's details. You can draw those in later. It can just be fuzzy. It's just gotta kind of look like a tree. I can erase out the areas up there too where there is some light peeking through. So the French academics would definitely have put in this kind of time. Like they had to do for the Rome de Prix, so to get like the big spot and the Musée d'Orsay and stuff, they had to create little thumbnails. They had to be okay by their teachers. And they were always multi-character uh, compositions. For me, I like one or two people in my compositions and a lot of landscape. Um, probably because I don't really, I haven't trained or know how to do a lot more multi-character stuff. I haven't had the need to tell that much of an epic story. I mean, let's not forget who was paying for the art back then. It's still propaganda in a lot of ways, you know? be at the church or telling some war story or an allegory of some sort. Maybe I will put a little mountain. That's my mountain. That's it. Right? Just a little bit. When I squint my eyes from um, his hip over, uh, there's dark value here. It's like a yellower grass but that doesn't mean it's a brighter value of grass. Sorry if you're seeing my head there. I'm not paying attention to the screen right now. Thank you for all your comments. 
I appreciate it just to know someone is out there. I would not talk out loud if it was just me. Otherwise, maybe that's what you need to do is pretend you're not there. Uh, and then I won't talk anymore. But uh, for the most part, we got two minutes or so. We're almost done blocking in uh, the values. So maybe I, I mean, maybe I don't have to go over and draw, draw details, right? Like it'll look good from far enough away. Maybe I sleep on it tonight and I think, you know what? I really want to go back to that. I'm not happy with how that goes. One of the other things I'd like to add to this right now is the uh, plants here at the lower side. I got two minutes here. That might be a little much to do. Maybe I'll just do some of the cleanup. There's like leaves here which accentuate the face down here. I can like, oh, there's grass. That would have been fun to paint how loose that is. Maybe, maybe I'll just signify this. I don't have to draw the leaves. These are thistles, which I'm sure have some sort of allegorical meaning in this painting. He definitely thought and planned to do them. He studied them. When I looked at the foreground elements uh, of the Bougaros when I was in San Diego, I was quite surprised by how well painted they were. Maybe not that was a surprise, but how loose they were. They're quite fun, even though they're closer. You know, I would ascribe to the idea that, well, they should be more in detail, but they were quite loose and, and funly painted. Like the way he changes in between his styles from very abstract foreground elements um, it really lends credence to what a great painter he was. To me, one of the most technically fine painters of his era. I would also say that of Velazquez, except Velazquez didn't do the type of work or detail work uh, that we see in uh, Bouguereau. Much more close to what the Flemish artists were doing, like Rembrandt stuff, much more loose uh, and painterly. Now this foreground stuff by Bouguereau would have been very painterly, or is, I wouldn't say wouldn't, it actually is. Okay, so it's quarter two. Now normally this is where I would do uh, kind of the closing of the session. I think what might be most prudent uh, is to keep going, to not steal all your time tonight, but um, actually that's fine, a little bit off white but to erase out and put in the white so that you can see uh, the intention of the value. So let's keep going. It's quarter two. I'm going to add 15 minutes and I'll just try to get that in and then we'll just put it up aside and we'll look at it. Sorry, 16. I'm stealing time everywhere that I can. Uh, there's some light spots here. There's some light spots here. So in terms of these light spots, because they're blue in nature, just erasing out is enough. I can insinuate um, branches with the negative space. You know, they're, it's just kind of got to look tree-like. This is not the perfect copy. This is just the value study copy. Above her head, right about here, it's like an upside down star, this shape. That's enough. I don't have to actually even put white in this one, though I might. Then there's some scraggly piece up here. Think abstract. Just taking out the dark. It's so much easier to take out the dark or to put a light on top, especially in painting. So rather than drawing around and trying to get it perfect, it's a waste of time. We don't have that. We're modern day people. How much time do you afford yourself to sit and draw? I have to force myself to do this. Because time, it's so easy to get caught up in other things, for example. Right? There we go. Clean it up. Just 
gonna soften this edge a little bit. So turning his form, her hand is much darker, so I should put that value on there. There's a couple parts that I missed here. But I'll just, maybe if I do this, it'll darken the rest of the hair. Gotta get in all the little nooks and crannies and grooves. Sometimes it's just a directional change. Her head is way, her face is way more dark on the front. And the neck. See, that took, that took guts on camera forever. Maybe I'll uh, regret that. I'll never be mayor of the city. Swearing and drinking whiskey, oh my. You choose your battles, my friends, you choose your battles. I would like to darken the front edge of her. So I'm just gonna add material and just kind of fade towards. Add material, fade towards. Um, it is much darker. You could almost draw two value scales within the shadow, but shadows can, um, you can get away with just doing them as one. So there's no need to go crazy in the shadows. I, I really like doing three values in shadows but shadows can be read as flat, so it doesn't give you, it's my bad because I learned the Italian methods first, but uh, you don't need to do it. They can just be flat, like a little Banksy or something. Let's keep them flat. So this value study is looking pretty good. Like I said, I can always go in and draw, draw, draw later. Like I could spend three more hours doing this. Not tonight, but I could just draw on it. Like it's not over just because time runs out, you know? Uh, let's put some indications there. I would also go back in and, and fortify some of the darks if I had more time. But let's get the lights in now. Okay. Uh, I don't have my brush with me, so I gotta use all the hot air that I've been blowing all night. So, it's not white. There is a color um, in the actual painting, but we're gonna just put white in it. And it's really important, in my experience, is to not let the light and the dark mix or you get this ugly gray. So try to keep them separate and definitely don't use these smudge sticks unless you have one for white specifically. Keep them separate. Lights and darks need to be kept separate. I can draw, there's like leaves in this part in the actual piece. I can just draw them like this. They'll, they'll read. Even though they might even be darker value. So I can also still, I'm not just filling it in blindly. I think this is considered white charcoal. I'm not, this is Creta color, so it is actually more oily. But if you have white chalk or white charcoal, the only issue with white, uh, some of the whites is that if you spray them, uh, they disappear. They don't stay white. You don't want them to get gray or murky, right? We want to avoid that. There's little pinches of it here. You can like fire a couple of things here and there. It should sit on top. Pretty nice. So we'll just insinuate some darker values there. I'm just gonna crisscross a little bit down here. It'll just sit on top. Just because the color of white is cooler, I do need to uh, have a relationship a little bit. There is a spot here. Now I don't even have to put white in this one. Depends where I choose how far up to put the white here. Um, it should relate. So we'll just put a, we'll put a little bit in here. We'll emphasize it because we're not making our darks as dark. Um, when I squint down, there is, you know, there is a little bit of light on the shoulder here. If I erase out a little bit, a lighter, more close to the skin color. This is not my preferred uh, tool though. So we'll just leave it. We'll leave it for now. It's a time thing. In here, there's color, there's blues, there's clouds, but for all intents and purposes, 
the value is light. We'll worry about this when we paint it. I'm a little afraid of painting this now. How many hours will that be? My God. There's too many other things to do. But the learning to get it, you know? How long you spend in art school? Four years to get a bachelor of fuck all? Don't spend four years on the one painting. But maybe 80 hours, two weeks straight full time if you had it. And I wouldn't do this as a full time project because the paint needs to dry. You need to, I mean, if you paint it like Bouguereau, paint part of it or paint it smaller. He got paid for his painting. So the thing about studies is you just get out of them as much as you can. And I mean, if you're lucky, you can sell them too. Um, you know, a copy of Bouguereau by. I want this in my house, so I'm not trying to plagiarize Bouguereau. I'm trying to learn from it. Don't make your business copies, though. Although, if you did that for 10 years, you'd be pretty freaking good at the end. You just would not have your own style. It's very hard to do copies, I find. But if you can like learn from someone's style, I would say another one. Yes, copy of Velasquez, Michelangelo. Why not a Soroya? Definitely, if you want to learn about colored mud, I would say that that might be a little higher level than doing an old master, because he knows where to make things goopy. He knows how to make it look good. So I'm loosely applying up here because I, I need a fade. I need a gradation of light to dark. As the sky moves up from the, it's bright on the horizon. It's quite white on the horizon. And then it starts to go darker and darker blue. So it can't be the exact same value unless it's like an overexposed photograph, which we're not doing here. We're not photographers. So I give myself six more minutes. I'm still gonna go over time, but more in the critique part. This creta color, I don't know if it's, it's too hard, but it's scratching the page. So I'm getting troughs and, and scar marks here, which is unfortunate. This paper doesn't quite hold up like a much more expensive paper would to this material. Maybe to one of my other whites, it would be fine. So I'm gonna maybe put a little white in this one. And then behind. So it fades from less bright because there's mountains here to brighter. I'm probably gonna use this entire stick up here. Um, what may have been smarter in hindsight, because a lot of art is just hindsight, would have been to use the uh, pan pastel. But this is really getting ground into the surface right now. Five more minutes. At least I got something to share on the old social media. I think in uh, 2021, I'm going to leave 2020 in hindsight far behind me, and I might just start the whole thing anew. I've put some not so high quality stuff on there. I think you kind of have to, part and parcel with what we do. It's I, in a way, I just feel like it's better to put everything else out. So I mean, if you look here, these shapes, they're just more refined and a little bit bigger, but the plan is still kind of the same as what I have here. Oh yeah, there's a little zigzaggy shape here. And a little peeking through up here. Anyhow, let's do the finishing now. Yeah, I'm using my left hand. Told you guys I use both. My right hand is a little sore. This was the broken hand for so long. It still hurts a lot to grip anything, but 
It doesn't hurt to just wiggle it back and forth. Trying to get it in all the little holes of this paper. This is relatively smooth paper even. If I had a smaller eraser, I might take out a little, little bit on the ear, a little bit along the back of the shoulder, right? Get back down to the paper a little bit more, a little bit on top. So just lightening up some of the values of the, the lights now. So a little lightening. I can do a little on the foot. Now that comes from the reflected light. Definitely up here. A little bit on the, just the edge of the nose, top of that lip, edge of the wings here. I'm lightly rubbing it over here. I'm not pressing very hard. Just to get along the scapula and the major and minor terrace, terrace major and minor, a little bit. That'll help round out her back a little bit. It is in shadow from here, right up to the rib point, um, which is right about there. And so there's compression here and the aces picks up a little bit and it also gets driven along the leg. These are large areas too, so they tend to appear lighter because they're reflecting more light, really. So last step, two and a half minutes, is just to go in, pick up some areas to darken so that our eye has uh, something to dance across. Now, this is not where you, you're avoiding the lost edges. You're just picking the areas that will be enhanced you see that? It just starts to pop um, by the darks. It's almost like where's the biggest areas of contrast that, that help you to see the forms. I think his butt is a good area for sure. And there's a dark right underneath the leg that reads strongly. A little bit there. I can also draw along the edge a little bit. That helps create the illusion of the contrast being more without me having to draw more. Her neck. Maybe put the eye back in as well. Oh, I turned her eye the wrong way. Inside of the ear. 30 seconds here, maybe darken the hair a little bit more too. You can just sit on top, right? I'm not gonna spray this probably, so. All right, 10 seconds left. We're gonna call that the show, but what I'm gonna do is tilt the, uh, oh, there's all the other whites. Those were the other options that I didn't use. So I'm gonna clip it back to the board. Maybe, uh, I don't know, do the going outwards or whatever I'm supposed to do with this channel. But that way you can see them side by each and get an idea of uh, what we're looking for. Maybe even I'll, I'll turn it to black and white or something. It's Photoshop. So just give me a second here. I'm just clipping this drawing to the board. Oh. Just one man, guys. Just one guy. Okay. Shoop. Boop.
Oh! Alright, so... It's a little bit crooked, but... There's our study, our value study. Um, I don't hate it. Yeah, I probably need a couple more hours. Who am I kidding? Her eyes are a little too far forward as well. Um, but, I mean, there you see it. There you have it. That's what we did tonight. In uh, two and a half hours, including breaks. There are things, anatomical things. Oh, you could see me in there. Let me go back in there. Hold on, hat on. There, now I'm more me. Now I'm more me. So you can see the little thumbnail study pretty much covers what's going on down here. More simplified, more complex. I'm going to go bigger, more than twice as big on the painting and have the advantage of color. But I'm starting to see little things that uh, have helped me figure out how I'm going to go forward. Let me try to convert this painting to black and white in Photoshop quickly. Or actually it's in preview. And then we can just have more of a look. Because I think it's good to use the digital tools to the best of our abilities. I'm sorry if that got echoey. Okay, so wait. Where's my cursor? View, tools, adjust color. Here we go. Um, saturation. There we go. Okay. Black and white now, is it? Oh man, I really haunted your back. That made it easier. I should have done that from the start. Anyhow, that's not the point. The point is also training our eye to convert what we see in color. Yeah, I definitely curled her back a little too much. But I'm glad I moved his foot down after that little break we had in order to see where I was off. But you can see I'm not worried about all the little details. Not in this much time. This is a, a translation of what I'm seeing. I don't know how many hours he spent on that. I mean, that looks pretty real. The edges are so soft. That's going to take a lot more time than what I have here. Um, the tone paper was pretty cool. Uh, a little bit challenging, but uh, I mean, I think I'm almost ready to blow it up in the painting and I'm one step closer to understanding uh, what Bouguereau was doing. Now the big test down that layer of shape, uh, value, edge, the next big one's gonna be color, like how he does his warm and cool. But if you've got the value right and the shape right, like we do in this little study, I mean, we're getting there. I don't have to uh, do this twice, probably. It wouldn't hurt. But I hope you guys enjoyed being along for the ride and that it was interesting. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, put it out there. It helps me uh, be motivated to continue. And uh, let me know what's working and not working because, you know, I cannot talk as well. And I can just listen to music. Maybe you like the talking. I don't know. I like seeing you guys comment on here. That's pretty cool. It makes me happy to know that people are out there. Look at that. Leah's saying the same thing. Chalk uh, goes clear. Yep, I know that to be true. This, however, is not chalk, fortunately. Um, it does have fat in it, so it will stay. But uh, I'm not going to bother spraying that. It's an exercise, right? That being said, you should continue to practice. More than me, maybe less than Keith, but practice nonetheless. And uh, I think I did all the things. I'm going to do this again next week. I don't know what I'm going to draw. Stay tuned on the Instagram. If you're an Instagram person and just checking in, I'm going to keep doing this on YouTube because it's way easier to broadcast the OBS. If you did draw and follow along at home, Please send me via email your piece and I can give you some little pointers as well. Hopefully just listening to me uh, is enough. I will get better at this as I go, just like anything with practice. That's what it takes. So I'd like to say have a fantastic week ahead. Ciao for now. This is my special effect. Whoosh.